Welcome to Inside Healthcare. Federal health officials say outbreaks of RSV and COVID-19 and the flu are threatening our holidays. RSV appears to be slowing down, though COVID cases have been rising since Thanksgiving and flu hospitalizations during the Thanksgiving week remain high. To find out the very latest of the cases here in Minnesota and what you can do to protect you and your family, we talked with Ingra Johansson with M Health Fairview. You know, it's been a really distressing and early um, respiratory season or what we tend to call this time of year when people come down with a lot of respiratory type symptoms and illnesses and viruses are spreading. And of course, this is on top of the COVID-19 pandemic, which is still a concern. People are still getting sick. Um, we are seeing, you know, I think cases have been averaging around 400 to 700 cases daily average in the state, but we do anticipate that that's quite an undercount just because so many of us are using those convenient home tests. And so many, many um, positive cases are likely not being reported. Um, COVID is definitely not over. Um, we're still losing people. People are still dying from this disease, although death rates have thankfully declined um, dramatically. So um, we're seeing, you know, the kind of the newer variant still circulating. Um, and the majority of tested specimens here collected from COVID positive patients are the Omicron variant. Um, it's really important if you have symptoms that you do get tested um, so that you know what you're dealing with and can um, isolate appropriately. And then for treatment for it, are we still recommending the same things or? I yeah, so if absolutely. So if you're someone who is higher risk for getting really sick, if you test positive, there might be treatment options for you. Um, again, so getting tested um, and then connecting with your healthcare provider right away if you are positive or going to one of the test to treat sites that are available here in Minnesota um, would be the best thing for you because they can start treatment immediately if it's recommended for your your individual situation. And that can really help you reduce your risk of getting very sick from the virus. You know, it seems like just about every day, I, I learned another person, they have sick and they have COVID and they seem surprised to get it. You know, the other one, I'm also hearing a lot of people um, with the flu or they're just sick. They don't really know exactly what it is. What are we seeing with, and it's so early with the flu this year and it seems to be spreading everywhere. Why don't you tell us the latest in here in Minnesota? Yes, absolutely. The seasonal flu is back with a vengeance. It's a bad and very early flu season for us. This is um, not typical, not typical what we would see for a flu season to see cases so early and such a, an acute spike in numbers. Um, it's elevated all around the country. So not just here in Minnesota, but um, locally, we're certainly feeling this. And it's, it's so concerning because the flu can be so serious for young people um, and the elderly, people with chronic conditions. We've already seen an estimated, I, I was just pulling numbers this morning, about 4,500 deaths from flu in the country, though, you know, so far this year alone, and um, really sadly, 40, 14 pediatric deaths already. So not, this, is a, this is a very concerning flu season. Um, if you've got small kids, you've probably experienced even some outbreaks in your schools. Um, there's been some schools that have had some significant respiratory influenza-like illness outbreaks. Um, so it's, uh, and we're, you know, this is something as well, if you are at risk for um, getting really sick from the flu, we encourage you to get tested. Um, we do have medications. Um, but your best method of prevention is really that flu vaccine, and it's not too late to get it. So if you that haven't gotten it question. yet, yeah. yes, it's not too late. So, um, you know, this would be a great time to get it too, with anticipating maybe some wonderful holiday gatherings coming up in a few weeks or more um, opportunities to, um, to socialize and be together. And to do that safely, it would, it's really important to get that flu vaccine. So if you haven't had it yet, it's okay, go out and get it. Um, and, uh, you know, we really do encourage that as one of the best methods of keeping yourself healthy. It seems like even in, we still hear a lot of myths about the flu vaccine that if you get it, 
if you get the vaccine, you're going to get the flu. And maybe you can kind of dispel some of those myths about it. Yeah, those are persistent and very misleading myths. It's, um, and we always are happy to talk to people about um, about those those things that they might hear that might create some doubt about, around someone making a decision to get a flu vaccine. Um, you often hear that someone will say, I'm healthy, I don't need to get a flu shot. Well, um, truly, while it's really important for folks with chronic conditions or young people or pregnant women to get vaccinated, even healthy people can get very sick from the flu. Um, so why take that risk? Even healthy people getting the flu also can spread it to others. So again, why take that risk? Um, everyone can benefit from being vaccinated and you'll likely have a far less severe form of the flu if you do get vaccinated and yet still um, still uh, get infected with the flu. And for those of us who've had influenza in the past, I've had it a few times in the past over my life, it's miserable. It is miserable. You feel so ill, um, you can't work, you know, it disrupts your life. So again, even if you're healthy, we definitely recommend it. Um, other myths we hear, you know, people say, oh, the flu made me sick. Well, that's, that's a, that's another myth. The flu cannot give you influenza. And what tends to happen is it's more around timing. And, you know, this is again, a time of the year where there's multiple viruses circulating or mixing indoors more often. And so it may be a matter of you received your vaccine, but you'd already been um, exposed to someone with another type of virus or even influenza. Um, and that vaccine didn't have the adequate time to um, mount an immune response in your system. So that tends to be kind of, we think what has has perpetuated that myth is really just a matter of timing and people making the, the, the connection. Um, however, the vaccine does not give you the flu. You may have some systemic kind of symptoms that we, some of us feel after receiving a vaccine, which is really just your immune system doing what we're asking it to do. So those can be quite mild, um, you know, tend to be maybe a little body aches or headache or a sore arm. And those are very self-limiting and not the same thing as having the, the flu. And you mentioned pregnant women were saying that they should definitely be getting the flu vaccine as well. And yes, COVID too, I believe as well. Yeah. Yes, it's that uh, pregnant, um, pregnant people are at high risk for severe outcomes from both of those viral illnesses. And the vaccine is safe and effective. Um, and it also can help provide the baby um, some passive immunity. So also being able to, you know, provide some of those antibodies to the baby if you're, you know, delivering during this, this season of, of respiratory infections, um, because babies are too young to be vaccinated until they're about, until they're six months old. So it's a, it's a really important message for our, um, you know, pregnant patients out there to get, get a flu vaccine and protect themselves. You know, and we're hearing a lot about the RSV as well, um, though I hear it's starting to slow down a little bit, the infections, but a lot of children have ended up in the hospitals across the country and, and even here in Minnesota. Tell us about the latest on RSV that we're seeing here. Yeah, that's another one that we're seeing. We've been seeing increased um, cases and really um, a lot of a lot of pediatric patients in our in our health system. RSV, you know, is a virus. It typically causes mild, almost cold-like symptoms like runny nose, cough, sneezing, sometimes wheezing. Um, and many people recover from it, but it can be very serious in our youngest patients, especially babies. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no vaccine yet for it. Um, so that's, you know, we have to rely on other methods of trying to prevent spread. Um, it's spread by droplets from a sick person coughing, for example, or sneezing or direct contact with an object that someone coughed or sneezed on. Um, and then, you know, people are contagious for a few days up to a week or more. And often our kiddos are exposed in those social settings like daycare, um, school, other social settings, and you can get RSV more than once. So it's a tricky virus and it very, you know, it can be very concerning in our, in our youngest patients. However, I've been hearing more and more of my adult friends who've been um, contracting it often 
friends who are parents of young children um, and feeling miserable. So um, we really just have to emphasize prevention with, with this one again, because an, a vaccine is not available yet. Um, so, you know, all those other things to help prevent other respiratory illnesses that could take you down, like get your COVID booster, get your flu shot, stay home if you're sick, really socialize that message of don't come to work if you're sick, you know, stay home and pant frequent hand washing and even, um, you know, consider masking in areas that are that are very crowded, um, especially if you're at higher risk. Introducing a new day of the week, someday. Now, everything you were going to do someday is on the calendar. Want to retire someday? You'll really want this. A My Social Security account at socialsecurity.gov. You can estimate your future benefits and manage current benefits online. Millions of people have a My Social Security account. Get yours today, because someday is here at socialsecurity.gov. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. Food shelves across the country are bracing for bigger demand during the holidays. Well, joining us back, back with us is Jessica Francis with Open Cupboard to talk about the situation with the food shelf here in our area. So glad to have you back. It, you know, you think that it's going to get better and it, it just, with all the flus and all of this and, you know, the um, inflation, what is really happening here locally? Same what we're here or worse or? Yeah, it, things are still continuing to rise for us and for food shelves across the state. Um, we've, we've seen a 941% rise since the pandemic started, but we're still seeing um, every week that we're seeing about one out of every five families that come to us are coming to us for the first time. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. Wow. They probably never thought they would be in this situation, and it's got to be tough for families, you yeah. know. Right. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was a lot of people that suddenly lost their job and income um, and were coming to us. But now it's so many families that are, are working, but with inflation and, you know, the cost of everything rising, um, increased bills, there's just more and more families that aren't able to, to make ends meet. And so they're coming to us. Tell us about the numbers that you've seen over, say, maybe last year. What kinds of numbers are you seeing with families? Right, so um, last year we were serving probably about 1,800 to 2,000 families a week, um, and we're currently serving more than 4,000 families a week. Um, wow. The numbers have just continued to increase, um, and and we're you know we're happy to serve people ho however you know they need they need food, whether they come to us or we have food delivered to them. Um, we're trying to make it simple and easy for people to get the food that they need. And these are people from all different backgrounds in our communities, right? Right. It's, um, it is really amazing. There's all sorts of stories, especially, um, I would say, earlier this year, um, there were a lot of seniors because, you know, if you're living in, on a fixed income and prices are mm -hmm. rising and prices are rising, um, a lot of seniors were coming to us for the first time um, and just using our programs to stretch um, their social security money or or um, whatever income that they have so that they could you know have the fresh food um, and keep keep their health up and to try keep up with that demand and even to um, prepare for it I mean you've made some um, improvements or ex ex you know expanded your programs tell us a little bit about that for those that are not familiar with it and open cupboard used to be the Christian emergency COVID food shelf that's right. So in July, we changed our name from the Christian Cupboard Emergency Food Shelf to Open Cupboard. Um, and, and some of our, our markets are called Today's Harvest Markets. And so people know us by a lot of different names, and we're happy to um, provide the food um, in whatever way works best for them. So uh, we provide deliveries um, to, to anyone in Ramsey or Washington County that requests it. Um, and, and we have our, our markets. Um, that we have two different markets that are located in Oakdale and um, people can come in six days a week and, and shop and pick out items um, that we rescue every day from local grocery stores. And that's unique. First of its kind in the country, you were even featured in um, Time Magazine. Yeah, it's, um, it's been really gratifying to see this model that we started, you know, here in Oakdale, Minnesota, um, that is, uh, 
really inspiring people from across the country to say, you know, is this something that, that we can do too? And then you also have your mobile unit as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, so we have our mobile food shelf too. Um, and so our mobile food shelf uh, brings the food shelf to senior, um, senior housing um, and different mobile home communities, um, areas where we know that transportation might be a barrier. Um, so basically we're, we're happy to, to provide the food to the community, whether it means um, you know, we go to them um, or if they come to us and shop in our markets. Um, and then we also have uh, a shuttle bus called the Harvest Express that- That is so um, cool. Yeah, that picks people from um, Cimarron and, and Landfall Mobile Home co Parks and brings them to our programs. Incredible. Rising to the occasion and really making it um, important for families in that. You were telling um, before we started about Thanksgiving. Right, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you fed the, the masses. <laughs> That's right. On the Monday before Thanksgiving, we knew it was going to be a big day, and, um, and it really was. Um, we had a uh, distribution of food at um, a mobile home park. We had our uh, drive up uh, distribution, which is more like traditional food shelf. Um, and then we had our today's harvest markets. And between all of those programs, we served 1,450 families um, in six hours. So it was just an incredible stretch of, of um, service, but you know we had over a hundred volunteers between all of that, uh, all of those programs to make that work. And when we're talking food shelf, people may think it's like the discarded canned foods that people don't like, and this is fresh foods and and meats and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So many people in their in their mind when they think of the food shelf, they think of you know cans and boxes and shelves of of cans and boxes, um, but, and they're really surprised when they come in um, and see what we have to offer. Um, all, you know, almost all of the food at our today's harvest markets just came that day from a grocery store. Um, so it's the salads and, and milk and meat and, um, you know, the deli items, the different, um, wow. different things that you see in the grocery store. Um, they, they take them off the shelf, our truck driver picks them up and, and makes them available to the community the same day. And it's all possible because of the partnerships you have, we said, with grocery stores and an army of volunteers and donations from the community. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that, that, what makes it happen. Right, I, I mean, it's the only way that we've been able to distribute, you know, f this year, five million pounds of food um, and serve 4,000 families a week. The only way that we're able to do that is um, with the, the number of volunteers we have. It takes about 170 volunteers every week um, to, to make that work. Um, and then the grocery stores um, that donate every day um, and provide that food and then the donors that support it all. Um, you know, there's, there's no way we would be able to do this without each and every part of that um, that comes together to make it work every day. So people can go online and see how they can donate, how they can volunteer, mm -hmm. and there's ops opportunities for lots of people to do that. Yep, on our website we have the different volunteer opportunities we have. We have all, all sorts of different kinds of volunteer opportunities. If you like working with people, you can um, work with people. If you like being more in the background and heavy lifting, there's that. Um, so people can learn more about the, the volunteer opportunities and, and ways that they can support our work. And we have the holidays coming up. We're getting ready for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's um, the holiday season. There's a lot of people um, that that come for help uh, during the holidays, and um, so we're we're gearing up for that, making sure that we have um, enough food and enough volunteers um, to make that work. And you know, um, a lot of a lot of people are in a tight spot right now, and so you know, we just hope that they know that there's a place that they can go and. Um, make sure that the, the family has what, what they need for this holiday season. Well, thank you for what you're doing and helping out the community at large, so, and the, that's wonderful. So, thank final you. comments, just people? Yeah, I, th I, I think just would encourage people, um, if, if you need help, just stop in. It's, um, it's simple and easy, and um, if we're able to provide, you know, the food that can make everybody's holiday just a little bit brighter. We're happy to do that. Well, a pleasure to have you on the program. Glad to have you back, Jessica. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. There! Uh, 
uh, what do we do? You may not be able to plan ahead for a ghost encounter. Under the dining table now! But you can plan ahead for natural disasters. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Know your evacuation routes and decide on a safe emergency meeting location. Here? I know. What a big Orlando. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. So pass the Proton Pack to the next generation and visit ready.gov slash plan to get started. Joining us now in our studios is Rachel Larson from Flow State. Glad to have you back with us. And we're going to be talking about some tips on how to reduce stress during the holidays. I'm hearing people, they're saying they're already stressed out and we're weeks away from the holidays and <laughs> stuff like that. So glad to have you back. Thank you for having me. So what are some of those top tips that you would give to a client in how to yeah. de-stress, get on with, you know, just enjoy the holidays, yeah. So top five tips. Number one, move when you can. Um, this time of year, I think it's particularly challenging because we're, we're busy, we're overbooked, and it got cold, and now the roads are icy, and we don't necessarily want to go out, so we sit more. We don't move as much. And when the body is happy, the mind is happy. And so we need to get out, like we need that. to move more. I mean, getting out might mean, you know, turning on a flow state video and, and doing some yoga or, or exercise, but walking, running, even running up and down the, the stairs a few times, getting more movement is number one. And you just feel so good afterwards, you know? like There's a reward. You get that reward right after. And you have yep. to hope that you, the people that you're walking with don't get COVID, which happened two weeks oh, ago. No, it didn't. So, but yeah, still trying to walk and get out and stuff like that. Yep, so number one, move when you can. And number two, breathe on purpose. You know, obviously we, we sit around, we, we breathe, breathe, we breathe day. all day, but, but to, to pause and take a few deep breaths, calming breaths, and to be present in it. Um, how long is it taking you to inhale? Is your belly expanding when you inhale? Is it contracting when you exhale? Where are our shoulders? Are they up in our ears? Can we exhale and relax the shoulders down? Melt, let go of a little bit of tension, and have a moment to truly be present with the breath and, and it might only take one or two minutes it can be really powerful i was going to say you could just do that anywhere anytime of the it, day right? it's a tool that's with you wherever you go and you can be anywhere and do it safely just keep your eyes open if you're driving but you know <laughs> pretty much you can do it anywhere yeah so that's number two and then number three especially during this holiday season is to be mindful and i'm thinking mindful eating I did a little experiment, <laughs> a little personal experiment. It, you know, more than usual cookies and sugar for a few days and just paid um, attention to how I was feeling physically, mentally, and spiritually, shoot, throw it all in there, and then stopped. And first of all, it was really hard to stop because <laughs> sugar is so addicting. But by day two, feeling better mood, more energy, um, more clear headed, and less stressed. And so, this time of year when you know cookies are all the rage and we've got goodies sitting around all over the place, think twice before getting started because once you start, it's hard to stop, but then also it will impact you maybe in a, a way that you didn't anticipate. There's temporary joy, but are you gonna feel great about this two hours from now? Because if not, maybe out of sight, out of mind, I would say take some of those sweets and put them in a place where you're not walking by them all the time because every time we walk by them, we have to decide whether or not to take one and that exhausts us over time. So I would say mindfulness with the eating would be number three. I think three. people don't think of that. They don't think that the food is going to stress you out, especially but when it it's does. sweet and it looks good. Well, on so many levels. I mean, think about it. So, so say you eat three, four cookies, you meant to eat one, and then what's in the back of your mind a few hours later? I shouldn't have done that. I feel bad. So the way you feel about yourself, let alone the sugar crash and the, what's, what's happening to your blood sugars and everything else. So I would say just set them where you can't see them and make your life a little bit easier. <laughs> so that's number three. And number four would be be present. And in this, in this lovely book, um, Dr. Suit from the Mayo Clinic, Stress-Free Living, he talks about um, this default state or when your mind wanders off and how when you can be present, you're actually four times happier, and there's studies on this. And so, so, so here's a test, okay. Have you ever walked into a room and kind of forgot what you went there for? Yeah. Okay, have you driven somewhere and not remembered any part of the journey? 
Well, I try not to. <laughs> right. Have you um, started reading reading a book to to maybe a little one and just the words were being read, but you weren't paying attention. Have you drifted off during a presentation? Your mind started wandering. All these signs are this default state. And when we're in that and not aware, it actually creates stress. Incredible, you wouldn't think that. I was a little bit surprised too. When yeah. I, but, but when you really think about it, um, it's true. So I would say a challenge to our, to our viewers would be to pay attention to when the mind wanders, what did it wander to, where did it go? and then to come back. And then we can start controlling those thoughts a little bit more. And awareness is, is the first piece, it's the first step. So then number five would be, be aware of your stress levels in general. Be aware of the expectations that we're setting on ourselves and placing on ourselves this time of year. Breathe, move, take a little bit of time for self-care and it's okay if the dinner's not perfect. It's okay if the presents aren't wrapped perfectly. It's okay if you say no to an event or a gathering because you just, you just need a break. It's okay. Like just managing the expectations that we place on ourselves, I think, is also um, a big one. So I would say that would be number five. Yeah, I was thinking during the Thanksgiving meal, too, we had four people. Two had COVID, so they didn't mm -hmm. come. Mm -hmm. And two others had flu or some other virus and stuff. And my thing was, well, it is what it is, you know? It's We're gonna celebrate with the people that are here and enjoy it and send some food home to the others if we could. So, yeah, totally understand yeah. that. Yeah, so those are, those are my five. Jody, do you have a couple words of wisdom? <laughs> I bet you've got a few of, on your top list. Yeah, try not to, um, you know, get into that financial thing, I think, too. You know, oh, like yeah. worried about the perfect gift or whatever. Again, sometimes mm -hmm. the best gifts are the ones from the heart. You know, it doesn't even have to be a commercial thing. Or, right, you know. right. Yeah, thank you for that. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot, Jody. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'd like to think, yeah. Yeah, especially, um, you know, and then also remembering those that, uh, the memories of people that are no longer with us, you know, that mm -hmm. we've lost through COVID or through other, um, you know, life experiences yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And just for, that warms my heart thinking about the good memories that, you know, I've enjoyed throughout my life and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's good. Any so, other tips that you might have? Well, I mean, I might say if, if you like moving at home and you like staying out of the cold, then we could try the holiday stressless program and, and challenge it's it's going on right now and folks can folks can jump in and sign up it's about daily self-care daily self-care meaning breathing we've got breathing videos two minutes to four minutes in length we've got moving meditation tai chi inspired between seven and ten minutes they're short you can fit them in there's yoga classes there's specific stretching there's a stretching video just for neck and shoulders there's a stretching video for mid back one for hips, one for ankles and feet. So just like how to you know, move the stress out of the body. And I'm on that personal journey myself. I printed out my PDF self-care schedule and I'm checking off the boxes. And um, I'm two weeks in and feeling pretty darn good. So I just wanna, wanna share that and that's- Where can people get more state. information about yeah. your stress, reduce stress free, <laughs> What is it? It's Reduce? a tongue twister. <laughs> yeah, stress. During holiday the holidays. stress less yeah. challenge. Thank yeah. you. Um, well, certainly on our website, it's theflowstate.com. But I suspect they could they could come and on your website find some information about us as well. And of course, we're on social media um, at Flow State Live. But anyway, we're we're here. We we have a mission to improve the health and well-being of of our members of our community and really, really want to make a difference in people's lives, feel better, move better, feel less stress and just be well. Feeling relaxed, just talking with you. So thank you, <laughs> Rachel. It's always great yep. to have you on the program. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jody. And that is our program for you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We hope you can join us next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.